Welcome to the show, my friends and teammates. If you happen to be joining us for the first time, we're grateful to have you with us. And we want you to know that you and what you're going through are the sole purpose of this podcast. We refer to ourselves as Team Journey. We're all here for each other, and we're sharing the cancer journey together. So let's get started. I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Elka. Elka, are you ready to share the journey? I am. Thanks for having me. Okay, great. Well, wonderful. Elka had breast cancer and has in, been in remission now for three and a half years. She lives in Golden, Colorado, enjoys riding her bike to work and hiking in the mountains and playing with her kitties. And we can all learn a great deal from what Elka has to share with us today. So please join me in welcoming Elka to the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. Well, we're so excited to have you with us today, Elka, and I've given a very brief in introduction of you, but before we get into talking about your cancer journey, why don't you take a moment and tell us a little bit more about yourself, like where you're from, and looking back, what your interests are and were uh, prior to experiencing cancer in your life. I grew up in Germany in a very small village in the Black Forest. I'm the second of four sisters. I met my husband during my first year at the University of Heidelberg. After I graduated, we moved to Florida. I enjoyed living in St. Petersburg. We lived in a very old neighborhood surrounded by people that were between 60 and 80 years old. Um, my best friend and neighbor there um, she actually um, passed away from breast cancer. That was my first encounter with, with cancer. Uh, we came to Colorado in uh, 98, and I've been living in Golden ever since. Okay, wonderful. Well, what happened in your daily life that caused you to think that something might be physically wrong with you? Actually, I had no symptoms. I went for my uh, regular annual mammography and um, I received a letter in the mail asking me to uh, follow up with another appointment. It was a very uh, polite, written, politely written letter asking me to come in for another uh, appointment to um, exclude any concerns. I see. So you weren't uh you weren't uh, feeling any symptoms or anything. It was just a, a formal annual a routine checkup. routine mammography, correct. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was the test that you underwent that ultimately led to your diagnosis. Yes. Now, what was your initial reaction and your emotions and feelings when you first got this news? Um, I had received such a letter before, um, uh, twice, and um, what, what usually happened is I went for another mammography and it, it turned out what the lump that I had was benign and I expected the same thing to happen after this letter. I see. So when you got this second letter, you weren't overly nervous right when you got it because you had kind of been through that before and, and gotten good news on Correct. the prior visit. Yeah, I was, I was not concerned. So I went in for d additional tests. Uh, and ultimately a biopsy um, that led to my diagnosis. Okay. And what was your official diagnosis? Invasive lobular breast carcinoma. I see. Okay. Um, were there more than one treatment options that you had to choose between? And, uh, and how did you go about making that decision uh, and talking with your doctor and, and what, what ultimately led to uh, the treatment that you selected? Um, well, I have, I have uh, two nurses in the family, so my sisters. I, I consulted them first and, and also a, a friend who had um, had the same diagnosis just a couple of years ago. I had to make a decision between a unilateral or a bilateral mastectomy. And at first, I actually thought about a lumpectomy, but that was excluded pretty quickly because of the size of my tumor. And um, I consulted uh, a couple of patients that, that I knew in 
among my friends. Uh, but what what ultimately swayed me to have the bilateral mastectomy was um, an x-ray technician who was much younger than I, and she told me, well, if you only have uh, the one breast removed, you will still have to come back for mammographies on the other breast. And I thought, why not? Why not be done with that? And, and so I, I chose to have the the double mastectomy. I see. I see. Well, what a what a difficult uh, decision uh, that you had to make there. Um, did you undergo your treatment in uh, the town that you lived in at the time? So, my my treatment actually consisted in in the surgery, and so I I basically had to travel to to Denver and and um, spend a week in intensive care and then rest at home for a month that was my treatment okay so were you working at the time and uh, were you able to continue to work or did you take some time off from work or uh, what what did your uh, schedule with with that turn out I to be I was working up until my surgery, and and then I was off for a month. Okay. And then I went back to work. Okay, so you only had to be off work for a month, and you were filling up to returning to work at that time. Yes. Okay. Now, did you have family or friends close by that were able to be there for uh, moral support? Um, my family lives lives in Germany, um, but I had a lot of support from friends who live here. Okay. Like they so, offered to give me rides to the hospital, and uh, if I needed uh, further treatment, like chemo, they I had friends who offered to take me. I see. Now, did uh, you have to undergo any other types of treatment, like you mentioned chemo. Did you ever have to do that or radiation or anything in addition to uh, your procedure that you went through? Uh, no, I actually expected to to have uh, chemo, but um, the my oncologist explained that um, my my cancer uh, historically does not um, does not have a different outcome with chemo. So surgery and afterwards the estrogen blockers was the prescribed treatment. Okay. And did was there a particular person that kind of helped you get to and from appointments or did you have to do that on your own or did you have someone close that you, you were able to rely on kind of as a caregiver uh, to help you through some of those rough uh, weeks and so forth? I, I had friends that offered to take me to doctor's appointments and and um, also have helped me to. They, some were actually in attendance while I was talking to the to the doctor just to to be able to make make the decision. Um, it I had a lot of support from from friends and talking to my sisters helped a lot as well. It um, even though they were my sisters are far away, I felt very, very close. Um, and we talked almost daily about what surgery to take and what, what steps to take. Oh, that's wonderful to have that support. Uh, I know there are many of us out there that, that don't have that uh, close connection with family and friends. And so the fact that you did, uh, I'm sure really helped in that time of going through that. Yes, it did. Well, good. Now, one question that our, our audience likes to hear, um, and in full disclosure, I lost my hair both times that I had cancer and underwent chemotherapy, and it, it did grow back. <laughs> but uh, did you lose your hair uh, during any of your procedures? No, I did not because um, I uh, chemo was not among the the treatment that was recommended for for my kind of cancer, and I was almost disappointed because my my sister had been diagnosed a month before me with ovarian cancer, and she had to undergo very heavy um, chemo treatment, and 
I was almost disappointed when I didn't need that kind of treatment because my my sister would would um, she would text me and email me with with the latest fashion of scarves that she was trying out and and I I wanted to I wanted to have that same kind of treatment so that I could I could empathize empathize more with her and be be in the same boat with her. Right. So that was almost a disappointment when I didn't need chemo. Well, the fact that you cared enough about her that you wanted to go through that says a lot. Um, and just it kind of also uh, points out that every type of cancer is different and every treatment for cancer uh, for the different types is can be very different and some have different side effects uh, than others so um, that's interesting and uh, would you say that you had any side effects uh, that came out of your uh, treatment and procedures or what was one or two of those side effects that uh, kind of stood out in your mind other than losing a major body part um, the medicine that that I'm still on um, makes your joints ache. It affects my 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 joints, and um, it's not very pleasant. And the the first medicine that I was on made me um, confused and dizzy, and we changed uh, the the prescription. But um, the yeah, so but that's pretty minor compared to what other patients have to endure. Sure. Well, it's still something that, uh, you know, that you had to go through. So it's, uh, sounds like it is kind of an ongoing issue and not something that was just isolated to the time that you went through your procedure. Um, I have to take this medicine. They're estrogen blockers um, for five years. So I have another year and a half to go. I see. Okay. Well, hopefully that pain will relieve uh, once you get past that uh, milestone. Now, did you have health insurance uh, that covered your medical expenses during this time, or how, how were your um, medical bills covered? Um, I, I Luckily, I do have health insurance through my employer, and um, other than the, the, the co-pays, I, I was covered. That was That was a very good thing. Oh, that's, that's nice. Now, what would you say was your lowest point during this whole process? And, you know, what can you share with us and, and how did you deal with that? My lowest point was when I learned that my sister's cancer was terminal and that she would not, she would not survive because we, we had kind of lived this experience together. She was diagnosed one one month before I was diagnosed, and so that was that was very sad to know that that she wouldn't make it. Well, I'm sure sorry to hear that, and you know, I kind of have the same guilt feelings of friends of mine that have came down with cancer since I had mine, and sometimes I just feel like, uh, you know, why why did I make it and and they didn't, so it's a very heavy burden to carry, and I can only imagine how that makes you feel. How did you find the strength to overcome that? Actually, it was uh, another sister. When we when we learned that that our oldest sister had a limited time um, left, um, my my um, our uncle arranged for us to meet in in Switzerland and we rented a house and by the lake and it was um, kind of we, we all got together and and had a very very fun time we we hiked my sister could still do everything she was very athletic always lived very healthy and so we we spent two weeks in in Switzerland together celebrating us and and that was basically the gift that my sisters gave up, all of us Wow, what a what a wonderful gift and what a wonderful time I'm sure you'll cherish forever. I will. Now, 
other than being told that your cancer was finally in remission, uh, what is one of your favorite memories of your cancer journey that you went through? Did, is there anything that sticks out that was a positive that that you'd like to share with us? It was it was that trip with my sisters to Switzerland. That was that was the the best thing. Oh, that's wonderful! What a, what a great memory. What setback uh, did you encounter uh, that you might want to share with us during your your journey? Was there a setback that you weren't expecting with your personal uh, recovery and so forth? And and if so, how how did you deal with that? I have not experienced such a setback yet. Okay, well we'll keep our it's fingers crossed. It's only been crossed. going up. <laughs> the you mentioned that the first. Uh, medication you were on for follow-up made you a little bit drowsy or confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you were able to change that medication and yeah, start feeling... Yeah, we corrected her. that. And yeah, that was, oh, that was, that was nothing. But you're very fortunate not to have had any major setback and it sounds like everything has really gone well uh, during your whole process. So uh, far, recovery. Yes. At what point did you know or find out that they felt that there was no remaining cancer that uh, you were dealing with? Uh, I know maybe it's not called remission or um, completion, but was there a moment in time where your doctor said, we think we have a handle on this and there's just this process of the five-year medication following this or was there a point in time that you really felt like you had uh, overcome the biggest uh, part of the challenge? I think it it happened when my oncologist said uh, well I don't have to see you every six months now you I, it's okay if I if you come and see me once a year that that was my that was the big biggest leap forward. Okay, so what a relief that was. How did that make you feel? Much better because I, I'm a bit of a fatalist. Every time I see the oncologist, I was bracing myself for bad news. So that was great news. Was there something you had been looking forward to doing at that point in time that was kind of a, a way to celebrate or uh, acknowledge that you had reached that milestone? I was just relieved not having having to go to Denver every six months. That was a big relief. Now it's so, just a once a year thing and that that is much better. <laughs> so just a peace of mind of knowing that you can relax at home and not have to worry about going in it, as often. Right, at right. least for another year, yeah. What have you been doing with your life uh, since then? Is there uh, any change in your day-to-day -day routine or what What's been exciting you lately? You know, um, getting up in the morning, having a cup of coffee, being able to ride my bike to work, that's, that's a gift. It sure is. And, you know, we oftentimes take things like that for granted. Uh, just the simple things of riding your bike in the mm -hmm. fresh morning air and enjoying a cup of coffee. I have a heightened sense of uh, awareness of, of, of just little things that are beautiful. I, I stop and take a picture of a flock of geese in the mornings or, or a deer that crosses my path. And yeah, you, you don't take things for granted so easily anymore. Wow. That's some words of wisdom for all of us, for sure there. Um, you have to take a break and smell the roses uh, right. from time to time. Right. What uh, What are some of your hopes and dreams for the future? Just to be able to live long enough to enjoy retirement. Do you have plans to stay in the golden area at that point in time, or do you ever think you would go back to Germany? For, for visits, but... I, I like Golden. I like Golden very much. I like Colorado. So home home is here in Golden. And, yeah. 
and you hope to take uh, visits and so forth. Well, that's nice that you're able to do that and go back and see family uh, when you when you want to. Um, so it's been three and a half years. Uh, is there anything you do on like the like when year number four arrives? Is there anything you do in particular to celebrate? Probably in my in just in being able to do the things that I'm doing. Um, right. I, I, I guess every day of life is kind of a celebration. That's so true. What, um, what words of wisdom would you share with other patients that have maybe just found out the news that they have a cancer diagnosis of some type, maybe breast cancer, maybe some other type of cancer? What words of wisdom would you share uh, with them as they start their journey? You know, every person's experience is very unique and individual. There, there is no recipe. You, you have to discover what makes you feel good. For some people that may be joining a support group, my sister did that in Germany. Um, some people don't want to talk about it, or at least not with just anybody. Some people feel more comfortable talking just to one or two select people that they're close to. That was probably more my experience. So it's, it's, it's a very unique experience. So there is, there's no blanket recipe. You just have to do whatever feels good for yourself. Right. Well, that is great advice, Elka. Um, pointing out how individual each journey is. And as you said, uh, going with what feels right to you. So, so true. Now, uh, we've got a few final questions here. What was the scariest thing about your cancer experience? The thought of not being prepared for, for death, like not having my affairs in order and leaving my cats behind. How did you overcome that fear? Um, I haven't, I have not. Now, uh, could you give us an example of a small accomplishment that you achieved along the way? Being here, being able to talk about this, that's a huge accomplishment. Okay. Well, I know there's potentially a lot of people out there that are going to be listening to mm -hmm. what you have to share with them, and and so that is quite an accomplishment. So I'm so happy to have you here, and I hope there's someone out there that can benefit from our conversation here today. I want to mention that I had wonderful surgeons. I, um, I, I will be forever grateful for the, for the crew, for the team in, in, at Kaiser in Denver. Um, I, I really didn't think that, that I could live to t talk about it. And, and I, I give a lot of credit to, to my surgeons. I'm so glad that you shared that, that with us. Um, what would you say was the best piece of advice that you've ever received? I, I talked a, a lot to a friend in Florida who, who was, who had the same kind of cancer and, and I felt very comfortable talking to her and and uh, I couldn't really pinpoint one best of advice piece of advice, but um, just just talking to another person who had gone through this, and she kept assuring me, you know, I went through this, I came out of it, you'll you'll come out of it, okay. And that made me feel very hopeful. So, you know, talking to another another person who had the same kind of cancer is probably the best advice I can give. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I'm glad you had that friend to, to share that information with. Um, was there any type of a resource or a tool or something that you used you might think to share with us, maybe something from a day timer to a special pillow or um, was, there, was there anything that stands out that you can remember that was a helpful resource to you? I think the best resource for me was my cell phone and WhatsApp. <laughs> so just being able to have hands-on information of where you needed to be and when mm -hmm. and communicate with, with your family. Well, that's great. 
if you could do it all over again, and knowing that you had were going to have the same positive outcome that you've had, is there anything that you would have done differently? Yes, I would have taken more time off work. Okay. What can you expand on that a little bit? Why I, and what? I could have taken more time. Um, the the doctor actually asked me um, if are you ready to go back to work and and I I went back to work after just a month and I I had a pretty long extensive I had a 12 hour surgery and and so as soon as the the drainage bags were gone I I went back to work and in hindsight I should have stayed home a little longer okay well that's good information to know and we all maybe think that we're you know, invincible and ready to go back and maybe there's pressures from work and so forth, but that's great information uh, for, for people to think about and consider. What, um, before we sign off here today, Elka, uh, do you have any final pieces of wisdom or advice that you would leave our listeners with? I think you, you just take one step at a time. Um, do whatever is feels best best for you sometimes advice from other people is good but sometimes it's just take your time and and listen to what is best for you well elka we are so happy for you and happy that you are three and a half years out from your cancer uh, treatment and surgery and we wish you the absolute very best uh, with your future we're so grateful f for the time you've spent with us here today, your expertise and your knowledge, and we just wish you the very best in the future and uh, are very grateful for having you here today. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. And I know we can all take away a ton of great information that you so openly shared with us here today. We'll have links in the show notes below to all of the resources that Elka shared with us. And for all of you listening, please remember that you're not alone. You're a part of our team. We're all in this together, and we wish you the absolute best possible outcome with your cancer journey. So until next time, please take care, and we'll see you on down the road. Thanks for joining us today. For more information, please visit us online at cancerinterviews.com. We appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you back here again next time on the Cancer Interviews Podcast.